What's up guys? So, as a lot of you know, I am kind of into some kind of, um, obtuse, uh, kind of concepts and ideas, uh, and one of those is the, like, meanings of colours and stuff, or, like, the, the symbols behind colours and that kind of thing can affect certain aspects of people's lives, etc. Um, and so, in keeping with that kind of um, cool kind of idea, um, the, I I like to occasionally um, divulge in. I guess I'm going to be doing that for this last video um, for the fourth of July. Um, so obviously, the colours I will be looking at are red, white, and blue, um, and what their kind of meanings are. So I will start with red for obvious reasons. Um, according to Wikipedia, which has a whole section just for the symbolism of the colour red, um, red uh, signifies courage and sacrifice, um, romantic kind of courtly love, you know, symbolised by the red rose, um, happiness, celebration and ceremony, Hatred, anger, aggression, passion, um, heat and war, warning and danger. Um, it is the colour that attracts attention, and it is also for uh, seduction, sexuality and sin. Um, so it has quite a diverse um, range. Um, courage and sacrifice obviously comes from the colour of um, blood, and the fact that um, in like battles and stuff, when you're... Um, sacrificing yourself for your country, um, you're, you're, you're giving kind of your blood to, to defend your country. Um, and that's kind of where that one comes from. Um, the Red Rose obviously is um, the almost universally agreed upon um, flower for courtly love. And like red is always put up everywhere around Valentine's Day and stuff. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the happiness one. I always thought yellow was happiness, but we will be here. Uh, red is the most uh, colour most commonly associa associated with joy and well-being. Uh, it's the colour of celebration and ceremony. Um, it's got a couple of pictures here. Instead of reading that whole thing, um, you've got uh, like red carpets. Um, Theatres and cinemas always have red kind of coverings on their seats. Um, and you you always go there to like you know celebrate the release of a film or to you know listen to a concert or something. Um, uh, at Oxford University, the um, academic gowns, um, scarlet academic gowns are worn by new doctors of philosophy at a degree ceremony. Um, in China, red's the colour of happiness and celebration, um, which is why you always see. Um, the lanterns that are on like the strings above the streets always red or usually red uh, and then of course Santa Claus is suit because he's like the symbol of Christmas which is the biggest celebration of the year um, hatred, anger, aggression all that kind of stuff again is sort of based on uh, blood but it's more the fact that that's what comes to your face when you get ang really angry and you face kind of flushes red um, and then with heat and war it's kind of the colour of fire um, or like the colour symbolic of fire warning and danger stop signs usually bright red um, colour that attracts attention is actually the only one here that's actually based in any proper science um, red is at beginning of the visible light spectrum when you kind of look at it in a row it's at the beginning um, because it's the color that travels fastest to your eye so you're going to see red before you see yellow before you see green before you see blue um, and I recently watched a video on how colors were named um, and obviously and it kind of went that there was a, a way that languages have kind of developed it I won't get too into it but basically Red was one of the first colours that had a name, and then after that, 
it kind of went in order of the, the spectrum because red's one of the first colors you'll see. Uh, and then for uh, seduction, sexuality, and sin, um, um, it's associated with that possibly because of its close connection with passion and with danger. And so then they kind of put the two together. Um, uh, with uh, to do with sin, Satan is often depicted as uh, as red. Red represents wrath, which is like the anger and stuff in the seven deadly sins in Roman Catholicism. Um, um, but it's also sometimes associated with murder or guilt, with having blood on one's hands or being caught red handed. Um, yeah. That's about all we've got for red. Um, white, the page kind of doesn't have a section just for symbolism, so you've got to kind of sort through it a little bit more to find out symbols that it kind of has. Um, in many cultures, white represents or signifies purity, innocence and light, uh, and is the opposite of black or darkness. Um, according to surveys in Europe and the United States, white is the colour most associated with perfection, um, good, honesty, cleanliness, the beginning, um, the new, like new beginnings and stuff, neutrality and exactitude, which is an actual word if you didn't know. Um, so, because of those um, kind of associations, it's obviously a very important colour for uh, religions. Um, Ancient Egypt and ancient Rome, priestesses wore white as a symbol of purity and their, therefore their virginity, because obviously they would have given their whole lives to the goddess or the god or whatever they were worshipping and therefore would have had to remain virgins. They would have given up all, all earthly pleasures to serve the god, and so the white was the symbol of purity. Um, and Romans wore a white toga as a symbol of citizenship, which is why that is the most common colour to see togas um, depicted in pictures and stuff. Um, and then blue, um, especially in American culture, represents depression and sadness. Uh, it can also represent tranquility, relaxation and peace. Um, I'm not sure if it would say so here, but it also... I'm just going to quickly have a skim. I haven't actually had a look at this page yet. Um, so because because it uh, represents tranquility, relaxation and peace, that's why it's used a lot more often in um, medical centres, like hospitals, um, dentist surgery, that kind of thing. Um, The theory that that's because the sky is blue, because water, like gentle water, is usually blue, as opposed to the stormy color of like greys and stuff. Uh, blue is also associated with um, the fifth chakra, and therefore connected to communication. Um, someone who speaks the truth and is faithful in all ways is true blue, um, which I guess. And kind of, is this kind of why Australians like to use that? To, to anyway, um, when communication is lacking, um, we can talk to someone until we are blue in the face. Um, the color of the ocean sky, blue represents mystery, depth, and intuition. When something profound surprises us, it comes out of the blue. Uh, it's seen as stable, reliable, dependable, and indicated as the reform resistant. Um, indent uh, I don't even know what this is saying, um, but this is the part that I was thinking of. Uh, it's often associated with depth and stability, and symbolizes confidence, trust, and loyalty, which makes it a popular color, popular color for 
uh, companies and like business suits and usually like a navy blue. Um, it's also associated with, it is associated with the lower or working class, hence the term blue collar, um, and that makes it a common colour for uniforms. Uh, it also stands, it may also stand for wisdom, intelligence, faith, truth, and heaven. Uh, it's frequently associated with emotions, like sadness. Um, in Iran, it's a symbol of immortality. Uh, it didn't say there, but it uh, can also be a colour for authority, which is why nine times out of ten you'll find the police uniforms are blue. Um, and then here we have different shades of blue with slightly different meanings. Um, dark blue has depth, expertise, and stability. Regards that represents knowledge, control, strength, integrity, and seriousness. Light blue has uh, is associated with health, healing, tranquility, understanding, and softness. Um, the deadly sin of sloth is also blue, so in that way it could also represent laziness. Um, in a way. Uh, turquoise represents uh, peace and truth in the lighter shade feminine, um, which is actually good to hear because often pink's the feminine colour while blue's the masculine colour, and I disagree with that. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of pink every now and then, guys. Um, Teal is sophisticated and balanced. Indigo symbolizes um, a mystical borderland of wisdom, self-mastery, and spiritual realization. While blue is the color of communication with others, indigo turns the blue inward. So, symbolize with yourself. Um, aquamar aquamarine represents water, and thereby various qualities of water that people like to put on themselves, um, like. Persistent. A, a, a river will always flow in the one direction, no matter how much you kind of try to stop it. Um, if you build a complete wall to block it off, the river will just find an, a new way around whatever it is you put in its path. Um, and that way it's also adaptable, etc. etc. Um, and that's kind of all I have on symbolism. Um, and so from those, from those symbols, with the colour, you can kind of get an idea as to um, kind of the core values, I guess, of an American person. Um, I will probably end up doing this kind of video again later on for Australia, whose national colours, despite the colours of its flag being exactly the same, are green and gold, which are not on our flag, like, at all. But... I'll probably end up doing that at some point down the track. Um, and yeah, if you like this video though guys, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below, uh, letting me know what you think, um, what your favourite um, symbols for those colours are. Um, and if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button wherever it is on your device as I make videos every single day. And yeah, until next time guys, keep raising hell.